hello guys welcome back to the video and in this video i'm going to show you how you can switch between two cameras or even multiple cameras with a key or a button here you can see i can do smooth transition between three camera views if you want to see the code directly you can skip to these timelines shown in the screen but if you actually want to understand the logic behind this then you can follow this video so to do this first you have to go to your character blueprint and after you open this up uh, if you'll go to viewport and go to our spring arm in this case it's camera boom so under the camera if we'll change the target arm length of the spring arm you can see we can have a transition between different camera views we can do the same thing with the help of blueprint but first we need a action mapping key in our event graph so First what we have to do is go to our project settings under edit and you can see here project settings and then you have to go to inputs and here you can add the action mappings. Uh, let's call this camera switch and I'm going to uh, select V key for this case and now let's go to our character blueprint again and uh, we want to call this camera switch inside this event graph. So let's search for it camera switch here you can see. So now what we need to do is uh, change the target length of the spring arm. So let's get our spring arm and let's search for set target uh, arm length. Now let's connect it with the pressed and uh, let's set the value to 500. Let's compile and test. So as I click the V key, you can see we have changed the arm length value. And now we have to switch back to the default value. So for that, let's copy and set the value to 300 again as it, it was a default value. So uh, now we need something to switch between these two. So let's search for flip flop. So yeah, so let's connect it to the pressed and connect A with the 500 value and B with the 300 value and connect the parameters. So what will this do is whenever you will press V key, and flip flop will go through A first, then change the value of the arm length. And the next time rather than going to A, it will go to B. And then this will goes on again and again. I think you got the point. So now let's compile and test it. I think it's working fine. Now let's add a smooth transition between these two. So uh, let me search for the timeline. I'm going to call this camera switch timeline. Double click on it and let's add a float track. I'm going to call this transition float. So now let's add two float keys. And uh, for the first key, I'm going to give it time of zero value and value is also going to be zero. And for the second key, I'm going to give it the time of 0.3 and value of one. Now adjust the length. And now change the length from 5 to 0.3 and let's compile and go to event graph. So here I'm going to attach the A of the flip flop to play from start of the timeline. So uh, now we need a lerp. So let's search for the lerp. Here we go and let's connect the alpha value to the timeline. So now we need to do transition from 300 to 500. So to do this, uh, we are going to type the same value in the lerp. So from 300 to 500. Now uh, from this written value, just connect to the arm length value. Now this, what will this do? It, this will smoothly transition from 300 to 500 uh, while using the time of this timeline. So uh, the same thing you have to do for the B case of the flip flop. So let's connect all the execution pins and connect the return value. Now in this case, we need transition from 500 to its default value of 300. So let's compile and test it. So uh, as you can see, it's working fine till now, but here's the issue. As you can see, if we'll spam the button, then it will have a weird transition issue. So to fix it, let's go back and make some space and let's add a node called do once. So what will this do is this will not allow the further code to be spam until its value is reset. 
so now it will go like this and when the timeline gets finished uh, we can actually reset the value let's do the same thing with the second case of the flip-flop now let's compile and test as you can see I'm spamming the V button but uh, the transition is having no problem with it you can always customize the timeline according to your need just change the time value of the timeline to change the speed of the transition you can see the transition is much slower than before because I changed the value from 0.3 to 1 now if you want to implement first person camera then go to your character blueprint and here you have to add camera component okay let's name this uh, first person camera and make sure it's a child of a mesh component and for less confusion let's rename this to third person camera okay now let's select the first person camera and under the sockets uh, you can search for the head socket now what this will do this will attach your camera with the head socket of your character now let's adjust it a bit okay after adjusting it let's compile and test this as you can see the rotation of the camera has wrong orientation so to fix it let's go to our character blueprint again and from here you can change the rotation x value to minus 90 and z value to 90 now let's compile and test it again as you can see the rotation has been fixed but uh, we cannot move the camera so to fix this under the camera option you can check this use spawn control rotation and after that compile and let's test this now as you can see we can move our camera around but uh, we don't want this first person camera to be our default camera so we can search for auto activate and uncheck this option now if we'll compile and test this again you can see we have switched to our third person camera so uh, now let's go to the event graph and in order to switch between three cameras uh, we can't use flip flop function because this only allows A and B to execute the command so let's make some space and let's create a variable let's name this camera switch index and make sure it's an integer and its value is zero so let's get this and if it is equals to zero now we need a branch in order to return true or false so let's attach the execution pin now let's connect the condition and if this is true then perform this task means changing the arm length value and uh, at the end of this code let's set the value of this index to 1 now let's copy the condition and paste it for the next one and change the condition to 0 to 1 now if it is false then it will pass to this condition and perform this code after performing this code uh, this will change the index value from 1 to 2 let's connect the execution pin now we will again copy paste the condition and change the value from 1 to 2 and connect the false to this branch now what we want to do is we want to switch from third person to first person camera so to do this let's get the first person camera and search for set active this will change the camera from third person to first person and let's connect it when the condition is true and check this new active after that um, get the third person camera and make sure you deactivate it after that set the value of the index back to zero and do not forget to reset the do once node so what this will do is whenever you will press v it will check the condition if the index is zero it will return true and then it will perform this code and after that it will change the index from zero to one the next time you will press the v key it will again check the condition but return the false and then it will check if the index is one but as you set the value of the index to one then it will return true and perform this task then you will set the index value to 2 then the next time you will press the v key it will go false check the condition again go to false and this time this will check if the index is 2 then it will return true and activate the first person camera 
and after that it will deactivate the third person camera and set the index value back to zero and the next time whenever you will press v it will check the condition and return true and the loop will goes like this there is nothing much complex in this so let's compile and let's test this as you can see we can easily switch between three cameras but here is the issue uh, we cannot move our character along with the camera which looks weird so let's fix this let's go to our character blueprint and at the end of this code let's search for set use uh, control rotation yaw yeah this one and let's connect the execution pin and don't check it for now uh, now let's copy paste it for the second code also and in the case when you will active the first person camera you need to copy paste and yeah you need to check this now connect the execution pin and let's compile and test it let's switch between cameras as you can see my player can move along with the camera movement and it's working pretty good but uh, I cannot switch back to the third person view so let's see why is this happening so let's go to our character blueprint and as you can see when we are activating we are also deactivating our third person camera so we need to activate it again here so let's make some space here and let's get our third person camera and search for set activate let's connect the execution pins and check this new active option and then get our first person camera and uh, deactivate it okay let's compile and see if this works let's switch and yeah as you can see we can easily switch between multiple cameras without any issue so if you don't want the transition for first person camera also then you can leave this video uh, the tutorial has been completed for you but if you also want the button functionality and the first person camera transition you can follow me along with this tutorial so uh, what you need to do is before activating your first person camera you need to have a timeline so let's make some space so you need a timeline for the smooth transition so let's connect the execution pin to true and uh, after that let's get our third person camera and first person camera so we need transition between these two so for that let's get the world location of the third person camera and the same for the first person camera let's get the world position of it so this will calculate the world location of these two so now let's uh, set the world location and uh, update it while the timeline is going now for the smooth transition between these two uh, we need a lerp node so let's search for the lerp node and attach the parameters now what will this do this will do a smooth interpolation between the location of first person camera and third person camera and it will interpolate with the speed of this timeline so we need to connect the alpha and here connect the new location parameter and when the timeline is finished it can activate the first person camera so now let's compile and test this as you can see it did a smooth transition between third person camera and first person camera but here's the issue the location of the third person camera has been changed so let's see how to fix this so as you can see we are changing the location of the third person camera but we are not setting it uh, back to default as you can see the value of the default is 0 0 0 so we need to set it to default again so to do it let's get our third person camera and search for set relative location yeah there you go let's attach the execution pins and in this case we do not need to change the location because the default location of our camera is 0 0 0 in this case you can change it if your default location is different than mine now let's test this yeah it's working quite fine i think this will be enough for the transition and now we can actually see how we can do the same thing with a button click so to do this let's go to our blueprint and let's add a custom event here and i'm going to name this camera switch and let's attach it to the do one so it will perform all the code 
so i had already created a ui where we have a button to switch our camera so scroll down in the detail panels and click on this plus button now uh, you have to cast to your character so let's cast and let's get a reference by get player character now let's connect the parameter after that uh, you want to access this custom event uh, inside this so let's search for camera switch yeah now uh, when we'll click the button we can call this function and now after that uh, let's add the widget to the screen so for that on event begin play i'm going to create this widget and add it so uh, let's compile and test this so we have the button on the screen it's working with the key perfectly now let's try with the button so um so yes you can see this uh, it is working perfectly with the button also so if you are making the game for the mobile this can be helpful i have also created a youtube channel for the indian audience for develop videos where i post the progression of my game i am currently working on so the channel link is in the description and if you found this video helpful you can consider like and subscribe to my youtube channel my social media handles and game links are in the description box below so if you want to play them you can download them from below till then see you bye bye